Hi, I'm Ed, and today I'm going to tell you how to replace a bearing in a Vento Reaction Campagnolo wheel. I noticed a bit of a noise when I was biking one day, and it sounded like there was maybe a brake pad or something touching. But I loosened up the brakes, and it wasn't that, so I spun the wheel a few times and listened to the bearing. It sounded like maybe it was a little bit rusty or there was something broken inside. So I opened it up, sure enough, I found some rust. So today I'm going to show you how to replace a bearing, and I'm also going to show you and let you listen to what to look for with my contact microphone that I made. So that you'll know, you know, if maybe if a bearing's bad in your bike, you can replace it yourself. I'm going to show you all the steps, so uh, let's get started. All right, so the first thing we're going to do is actually listen to the wheel and uh, find out if we have a rusty bearing or, or not. So you're going to want to pop this little thing open. That releases the brake calipers. See what I mean is that it's kind of hard to uh, actually listen to this, so I'm going to go ahead and plug in the contact microphone now. We're going to put it on the bike and see if we can uh, hear these vibrations. Okay, so you can hear some of the noise that this bike has been making. You can really feel it on the handlebars, that's why it's getting pretty annoying. It's kind of got this crackly, crunchy sound. Okay, so we already completed the steps where we're going to release the caliper on the top. Now what we're going to have to do is undo the quick release, and then rotate it. It comes undone like a bolt. From here, we're going to take off the skewer, and then we're going to pop out these end caps, and then we're going to get access to the bearings. Same way you take off the wheel from the bike, you just keep twisting. Then there's going to be a little spring in this end cap, and there's going to be one on the other side. I like to keep all my parts together, so I'm just going to put this back together and put it off to the side. So the next part is going to be removing this little spring clip that's inside here. So basically you need to get something inside of that and you need to pop it open. Then these end caps will fall off. So now I'm using a small pair of jeweler's tweezers to open up this snap ring inside. So you're just going to press in and pop it open. First time I did this, it flew off and it took a little while to find, so be careful and hopefully it won't fly out. This is just an idea of the size of this tiny snap ring. Then I pried it up with this small little flathead glasses screwdriver from the back and then it popped out. So from here it's pretty easy. This whole section here, you just grab on and it slides out. That's the bearing that we're going to want to replace. You see a lot of rust. We're going to replace this and slide the axle out the other side. So I just tapped this other side out with the hammer. And now you got your bearing here. This is the good one. Well, let's just double check. So I'll set this one aside and let's pop out the other side. Okay, so we found something to knock the bearing through the other side. Now what we're going to want to do is start at the top at 12 o'clock then go down to 6 o'clock and then 9 o'clock and 3 o'clock. That way you kind of knock each side of the bearing out at a time and you don't warp this inner wall here. Because then when you go push your other bearing back in, it's going to make it more difficult. You're just going to run into problems. All right, it's out. That bearing's a little bit rusty sounding. It's not too smooth. A little bit rough, and you can see that there's rust in inside and on both sides. Oh yeah, much smoother and silky. So now we're going to get this one back into the wheel, and we're going to reassemble the axle, put it back on the bike, and give it a spin. We got a little snap ring here. These are actually much easier to put back on than they are to take off. I think you might even be able to do it with just your fingers. All right, perfect. So now it's seated in there. And we can go ahead and put our skewer back on. So one more thing. I always put the skewer on with the label facing down on this on the left side of the bike. That way the wheel is always rotating the same way. Okay, so we got the wheel back on the bike. 
Usually I don't like to put the wheel back on the bike when it's in a repair stand because then the wheel isn't really seated right up against the forks. So I like to get the bike on the ground, open up the quick release, press down and make sure that it's fully seated in the forks. And then I know for sure it's not going to be, you know, grinding up against there and being held together with just the force of the, the skewer. So from here we're going to just take a quick listen. It's really, really uh, quiet. And I don't, don't hear the same noise we were hearing before. So I get to have a more efficient and smooth and fun ride. And I can stop worrying about a possible bearing going out on me mid-ride. So uh, I hope that you know this helps some people out there who happen to have a you know campy Vento reaction wheel set like this. I'll probably just end up getting a different wheel set pretty soon. But anyways, it's always kind of fun to, to take apart your bike and find out how to replace bearings and replace different parts of it once they become worn out. So thanks.